The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And let's see what we got going on right now. We are basically flat on the S&P. Uh, the Russell is up 0.7, 0.8. I was expecting today to be sort of a flat day. Um, just, I mean, when you get that kind of market movement two days in a row uh, on the indices there, so not a big surprise right there. And we have, I mean, we've had a little intraday volatility, definitely. But, I mean, overall, it's still, you know, we're only up a quarter from yesterday's settlement. So, we got the Russell right now at 0.8. We had the NASDAQ up 10.25, 10.0 right now. Or down, I'm sorry, down 10. We got the Dow up 15 right now. So, right now, uh, only one indice in negative territory, but the other one's not really in that much uh, positive territory. And uh, NASDAQ uh, sort of lagging behind, and I guess you could say Russell and uh, Dow are sort of neck and neck at 0.1%. Um, we got oil right now down a buck 49. So definitely uh, that's something to be keeping your eye upon right there, just oil. Uh, it's down a buck 49, but it is starting to push and tick. I'm starting to see a little bit of tick noise right there. Looks like it might want to be moving on up. And uh, yeah, we just saw about a 10 tick pop, so down a uh, buck 40 now. And um, looking over at natural gas, it is down one, basically one and a half percent along with oil. On our ag front, what's going on with the ags? We got corn down 8.75. That's a 1.3 percent move. And we got soybeans down uh, almost uh, four points, three and a half points right now. It's about a quarter percent down uh, move right there. Your dollar is getting hit. It is down 80 pips with King Dollar leading the way right there. We got Aussie Dollar up 32 pips. We got the Pound Dollar down 72. So Aussie, despite all the uh, action on the dollar, has actually maintained some strength through all this and actually shown a little bit more strength in the dollar right now. Looking on over at the, uh, let's see, the U.S. CAD, it is up 82 pips on the day. It has been moving. I've been watching it. So I'm hoping to get one last pop right in there. We'll see. We got dollar franc up 66 pips. The euro yen is down 18, with pound yen down 20. U.S. yen is currently up 45 pips, with gold up 9.7. Silver is up 1% on the day. And copper is up 1.1%. So basically a 1% up move right there on the metals. Um, just about 1% on gold. We've got to give it a few more points. Uh, it looks like it might want to get there. Let's go ahead and scroll through and see any kind of you know trading possibilities. We'll also look while we're doing all this. We'll also make sure we're taking a look at our uh, deviation method. And uh, so as we're looking at some of these possibilities, and I'm pulling up, I'll pull up a few different charts. We'll put all the pieces together. Nice thing is, uh, if you don't know about this, you can do a uh, Control Plus, Control Minus on your keyboard to zoom in and out, and uh, that's a very and then Control Zero to get it back. One time before I knew this. I had accidentally done like that, and I had no idea how to get it back. And um, so, because I hit Control minus, I had no idea I accidentally hit it. And uh, so, not only can you do Control plus, but if you want to get back to normal, you just hit Control zero, and that'll reset it for you. But that's a very helpful tip, you know, if you're using a lot of websites and you just want to, you know, have a very small window to look at on them right there. So, let's see. Uh, we'll look at some potential premium collection trades maybe a little bit later in the hour here. And uh, but it looks like you know we have a few things moving. Oil is probably the big one moving right now, and so I am a little bit tempted to go ahead and check that one out. So I'm going to pull it up and look at it, and then uh, we're going to go ahead also, and let me uh, bring one chart up on the screen here, and we'll uh, so we can flip through our deviations like we do uh, each and every day. So there we go. Got that screen. Let me bring it on over. So that's uh, one of them right there. Here we go. All right. So we got that one on up. And now let's go ahead and you saw it sort of bounced off the one and a half, pulled back down to the one. Dollar CAD sort of doing the same thing right now. And uh, we'll see if the dollar franc and dollar CAD sort of stay in that range. Um, but it got the one and a half, came on back down to one. We'll see if it pops on back up there to the one and a half deviation. 
And uh, let's check out, let's go ahead and look at oil because oil is uh, showing you know, quite a bit of strength. And uh, as far as coming back from where it was, not saying it's up on the day, just uh, you know, up. And so, yeah, starting to move on back up there. I like that. So it's looking solid. And I'm going to wait for a little bit of a pullback um, before I hop on in on the oil contract. But uh, we are starting to get a pullback already. I just want to get one more pullback up on there. And um, but we uh, would have just hit, okay, if we are using our you know regular stop method, right? So we're going short. So every time there's a pullback, go short. You know, another pullback over here, go short. And another pullback right here, go you know short. So stops all along the way. When it closes below a deviation level, so you tighten that stop right there with your uh, initial stop loss like above the high from the pullback. And so I'll put those on right there. We got another one. And then it, this bar closed below, so we got it right here. So we just would have had to hit that bar. And also we had one more, like a miniature, move down right over here, which would have had a stop right there. The important one, though, the important one to note is to be aware that you know we hit this uh, stop here. So we've got a high of what? High of 93.80, so 93.85. We go in there, and a lot of times when you hit that uh, 10 minute stop, you'll often see, especially after the one deviation. Okay, I put more weight on it at the one deviation because you can get a lot of oscillation up there in between half and you know 0.5 and negative five. But uh, Looking at that, so we did hit that. So usually that means that we are going to be looking for some sort of either <clears throat> reversal or chop into the rest of the day. So this is the point where you may start looking at butterflies. You might start looking at premium collection. Um, we can pull that up right there and see what potential trades might exist. Um, you can put on like right now you can put a 9409 by a 9369 trade on. Okay. And uh, that puts you at the stop up here right at the point seven which is sort of nice and uh, let me uh, bring that back up because it was on the deviation line and then you can put another one right down here at 93.69 which is pretty close to that minus 1.5 so that would give you a decent little range we don't have a we have 45 minutes left though and oil obviously is uh, really showing some uptick strength so I would say at this point we may want to go ahead and just go directional in the trade and so I'm going to go, I'm going to grab this 93.69 uh, on oil at the moment. And that gives me a decent little premium collection trade. We can put that one on and we'll uh, place that order. And so now that that one's in, basically what that means is so long as oil stays above 93.69, whether it stays flat or above it, then uh, we have, um, we'll basically make about $25 on the trade. Now it looks like, okay, you're risking, you know, 75 bucks. We don't have to be risking 75 bucks. We can get out. Okay, um, and so you know we can get out when it hits our strike, and uh, if we do that, then we'd be able to get out about fifty bucks. All right, so if oil were to pull back to ninety three sixty nine, we'd want to exit, you know, right around fifty dollars if it hits ninety three sixty nine. Okay. So that's a simple explanation of a premium collection trade. It basically is giving you a one-to-one, -one, and this is this is a cool thing to think about, okay? Because if we get out if it hits 50, and we're making 25 bucks on it, then we have a one-to-one -one premium collection trade. Why is that so good? Well, a one-to-one -one premium collection trade, one that expires in like less than 45 minutes. You're not, you know, if you trade like weekly options, you know, uh, monthly options, we're talking about options that expire every hour, and so we go in here, we put this trade on, and if, like I said, if it falls back, great, but check this out. If it goes up, we make money. If it stays flat, we make money. If it goes down a little bit, but not too much, we make money. So all those scenarios are obviously positive scenarios. Uh, if it goes down too far, we're going to get out of the trade. And so you know we want to hop out of that trade. And uh, too far would be basically, in my opinion, down to the strike. So if it hits 93.69, I'm going to hop out because on the next trade, I could make 25 bucks and make back my risk. If I hold on to it, it's going to take three more trades to make back my risk. And so I'd rather take a loss and look for the next good setup as I would um, go in and uh, 
you know, have to make three more trades. So, because I mean, that's a lot of pressure to have to do that. But if I can get that, uh, you know, risk reward down to, <clears throat> you know, one to one or even two to one risk reward, that's better than like a three to one or four or five to one. But, uh, you know, it's a lot better than like a 10 to one. But uh, you just want to make sure that you definitely do have that trading plan in place. And once you got it, there's a couple choices. Uh, one of those choices is you could go in here and you could say, you know what? I think I want to put a take profit order in here. And so I could set this right here to sell out of it. We'll just say if it hits 95. Okay. So I'm going to hit that uh, place order in there. There we go. And if it is 95, then we're going to hop on out of the trade. And and then I also want to be ready for a potential stop loss. So I, what I do on that is I'll go down and I'll put it down at like 40. Okay? Um, and I'll just have the ticket open and ready. So, because it comes down, I mean, it could move really fast. And, uh, you know, I don't want to be stuck inside this trade. And not be able to get out and like hitting tickets and changing tickets and have working orders that keep going into pending because I hit it at 55 and then 50 and the things at 47 and then 48. So if I just hit that button, I'm going to probably get my best possible fill price on the trade. And uh, I don't know, this is one of my favorite ways to trade. And this is using a very simple method. Okay, all we're doing on this trade right here is I was looking for some you know oil strength. Okay, but I sort of waited until after uh, it had broken the 10-minute deviation stop method. So I'm on 10-minute bars, okay? Nothing complex here, just simple 10-minute bars, and I'm using the deviation levels. And we, of course, post these every day inside of our room. And, uh, you know, it just makes it, you know, really easy to hop in and, uh, you know, find out sort of how far you expect the market to move on any given day. And notice, I mean, we're also hitting this deviation level, too. So this is something to think about. I'll go ahead and bring this point up while we're here. Is It's, it's sort of stalling right there, right? At that 0.5 deviation, we expect that. We expect a stall there. So I don't know if it's going to fall back, if it's going to be able to have the strength to break through it. Those levels are insanely tough. <laughs> um, they work very well. And so, you know, a couple things. Is, I'll show you, share a couple tricks here. Um, you bring this over. And what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll pull up the oil contract. So I'm going to go over here into Nadex. I'm going to hit Commodities Binaries. Okay. I'm going to go over here to Crude Oil. And I'm going to check out, let's see, what expiration? I got the 2 o'clock expiration. So I'm going to check out this 2 o'clock expiration. <clears throat> and there's a few things that I think are very wise to be aware of, such as what is a strike worth, you know, when it hits a certain point. Like, see how this is 94 and this is 96? So you may decide you don't want to do the 95, you want to do the 94, and see we're at 94 right now. So I'm going to update my working order, and I'm going to get out at 94 right now. All right, we'll be back right after this break. says you can't take it with you. TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. All right, folks. Welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. This is why we get in, take profit, and get out. Uh, notice how we went. I was talking right as we got out of that show. I was like, hey, it's up at 9439. We're bouncing right off that 0.5 deviation level. Let's go ahead and uh, probably go ahead and take that profit. We did. Things falling all the way back down now uh, to where it was uh, when the search started there. So, uh, but it's definitely something that you want to do. I mean, now it's down to like 50 bucks. So we went in we originally we bought it for about 75. So you'd be down 25 bucks right now. So this is where you'd be getting out if it hits 93.69. Looks like it hit that. So you'd be out of the trade if you had not taken your profit already. Okay? So we got in. We had a one-to-one -one risk reward. If the market moved up, stayed flat, or moved down um, a little bit, we could be moved down a little bit. We could be profitable. Um, and if we did lose, we wouldn't lose more than what, you know, one trade could bring in, which is a pretty cool scenario. Um, and just, uh, you know, sort of just a simple way to trade. And But uh, the deviation levels are what made it possible. Okay? So it made it much easier to do because what I did was we had the trailing stop method going all the way down, okay, boom, 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 all the way down, and then it broke where we'd have our stop loss on the trailing stop. I'm like, hey, we're getting some momentum because when this happens, we're going to get a nice little pop. I'm not saying we're going to go to the moon, but we're going to get a little pop right here. So I went in, I found an oil contract to go long on, but I wanted in the money because I didn't expect it to go super far. Out of the money means you think it's going to go really far, okay? In the money means you think it's going to go in your direction, stay flat, or maybe come back a little bit. 
Well, it went up there. I saw it hit that deviation level again. Okay, so I used the deviation level to help me know when to get in. And I also used the deviation level to help me know when to get out. And it was very close to my profit level. And so I saw it hit that and then start pausing. And I'm like, ah, let's bell. And um, so, you know, good trade, simple trade, very easy to do. And, uh, you know, highly recommend that you check these out. So they're pretty cool. They're a lot of fun. And uh, they're not really that hard um, to get used to. I mean, you just got to, you know, you got to practice a little bit. But, uh, you know, the deviation levels make it very easy. And then I tell you, you know, I'll look at things like time and cells. I'll have my time and cells up. And um, I look at, you know, different indicators that I have. But not, most of my indicators are more sentiment style indicators or statistical style. You notice you don't see a whole lot of stuff on my chart. Um, you don't see a lot of moving averages and stochastics and, you know, all that. I have RSI on there so I can sort of look for potential RSI divergence. Uh, that's probably the one thing I do like to see, especially, you know, when it lines up and you see the reversal. Uh, that's like, hey, that's just, you know, that's more of a confirmation than it is a signal. I guess would be the best way for me to put that. But um, you can see right, right here, we made a little lower low. I mean, this is a really small RSI divergence. But right there, we made a lower low. And then over here, you know, uh, we're looking at, you know, basically as the market's moving down, moving down, moving down. Oh, wait a minute, i got to get the... Uh, the line tool here again. So we're moving down <laughs> from this point to this point. And then I see a divergence right here. I mean, really small right there. So I see that divergence. Now, that didn't mean anything to me. Okay, there was a divergence. So what? Uh, often divergences are accompanied by reversals. But I need more than simply seeing that on it. And uh, so as you can see, it's moving up, moving up, moving up. And then it hits our 10-minute deviation stop. That's probably one of my favorite trolling stop methods that exist. And uh, and one of the reasons is so often when I see that deviation stop hit, that sort of means the market's done. Like it's cooked. It's over for the day. And uh, it doesn't mean that you know, I can't play some oscillation. I might get some great, uh, I might be able to do an at-the-money trade. I might be able to do a butterfly range-bound trade. Um, and <clears throat> so, you know. Just let it uh, play itself out, but that, that's, you know, just one example for you. And let's see here. Do we have time on the clock? We might have just enough time. So we're going to go here. We're going to look and see if there's possibility for, I mean, maybe, okay, maybe, maybe. Let's see. We're going to look at gold for a second. And uh, so I'm going to pull up a gold trade because gold's about to expire. So is there anything sitting there? Maybe there will be, maybe there won't, but it's always fun to check and see. Ooh, we got weeklies. We got a daily. We got one daily hanging out, expiring at 1.30. We have the weeklies also expiring at 1.30. On Fridays, you get the weeklies and the dailies crossing over. Let me zoom into this a little bit. It's probably impossible to see uh, if you're watching over there on Tiger TV. And... Uh, all right. Well, uh, don't necessarily. Twelve ninety eight would be the uh, maybe the one acceptable one out of that bunch. That's actually really cool. Yeah, I'm taking the twelve ninety eight. So, uh, well, uh, as a potential uh, buy trade, but we'll, I'll come back to that when we come back from the break. We'll talk about it. All right. Stay right there. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit. And on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of tfnn.com the art of timing the trade charts has officially launched at tfnn in collaboration with tom o'brien and using his best-selling book the art of timing the trade your ultimate trading mastery system david white has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology Using this first-of-its-kind software, the art of timing the trade charts allows you to scan for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and much more. The art of timing the trade charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, and even months searching to find. As part of our introductory pricing, we're offering licenses available at only $59 per month. We're so confident that you'll love this new outstanding piece of charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Lock in your low price today by ordering your copy at TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, we're checking out a few different things here to see what all trades we can open up. And it um, looks like there might be a corn one. I want to check and see if that corn one's active in the live. So we're going to go over here. And right here under our corn, the dailies, we've got a 667 or a 665. Well, I don't like the 665 at all. But uh, we'll check that 667 out. So tear off ticket. Okay. And then we could also get the weeklies. They expire at the same time. Nothing on the week we should even consider. Okay? So uh, just looking at corner right now, what do we got going on? All right, well, we've been moving down, moving down, moving down. We haven't busted through to do a total reversal. But uh, just check out this price action between 16.65 and 16.63.5. Um, it's been oscillating up and down for about an hour now. Uh, so you could say that corn has a pretty good chance of being uh, sort of flat, right? <laughs> And so if you wanted to, you could go in and you could look at selling this. When you need to, you know, babysit a little bit, it's going to be a little bit tighter uh, trade there. But uh, go in and say, like, put the trade on. And we'll place that order right in there on the corn contract. I mean, this is a cool way to trade corn. Uh, and then we get the uh, position placed. So it's in there now. And uh, we can see we're filled on that. Big old bit of spread there. But it uh, doesn't really matter. We're not paying the best spread unless we're hopping on out. And there's really no reason to pay that best spread with the amount of premium that we're receiving. So 
Uh, but we're in that trade, and again, we're uh, stop loss is going to be right up here around 1667. Okay, and it's sort of cool when you get the dailies and the weeklies lining up together. You can even look over here and see if there's anything that you might be able to hedge with. And so I want to show you something. Um, if we see like this contract go down, in this case it didn't really work out that well, but if we had ones that were closer, sometimes you can go in there and you can get one that's closer for less money. Um, maybe you know, on a small move down, I'd be able to get it for like say five bucks or something. So if you're able to actually accomplish that, then you you've act, once you put on that second trade as a hedge, you have now a risk-free trade that will bring in capital. So that's a simple, just a corn one. Uh, let's look over. We'll check out. I oh, know. Let's check out soybeans. All right. So we have that one up, and now let's go over here. We'll check out our soybeans. And on soybeans, what do we got that we can take advantage of? Fourteen ninety six point five. Uh, I don't like that. I don't have any kind of deviation levels. I don't have anything back in me. Soybeans have just been flat. If I'm going to do this trade, I'm going to be doing it based on me assuming a, a neutral uh, trade on here. So what does that mean? That means I'd probably like be expecting a range between 1490 and, say, 1496.5. So if I want to do a neutral bound, which means I'm not so much directional as I am saying, hey, I think the you know soybean market will stay in between 1496.5 and 1490 right here then I mean that can be my trade and so what would I bring in for that I'd bring in about 38 bucks on the trade and uh, if it stays in this for the next you know 45 minutes um, in the market so to do that you just literally click on those two tickets on soybeans bring in about 38 bucks on it and you can get out of the trade by the way if it moves against you and you're not gonna lose that much it's pretty cool because one side will be like near max profit and the other side um, Let's see here, we got, let me redo those. Click here and click here. There we go. All right, so there's our sell side. We got that one in. Okay, so 1496.5, then our buy side, 1490. And uh, so you can also go over here, you know, you can find them in this, but it's a lot more work to find them in here. And there's a buy side 1490 at 82. And if you see it ticking down a little bit, I mean, you can wait. You can see if you get a better one. I mean, you just, you're reducing your risk if it does go back up um, by buying this one right here. Because you're saying, hey, it'll expire above 1490. So we hit place order on that. And uh, it always helps to have a size in there. And there we go. Okay, so bring in about 40 bucks on that trade. And we got that one down and out of the way. And, you know, it's just, uh, again, you want to make sure you are sort of monitoring them. I have, you know, other screens over here where I'm checking stuff out. And this is just, I'm just letting time pass. Just letting it eat it up. Um, what else do we have? We have crude oil, so we could go back and check that out. You know, we, like I said, we got our corn position on. So right here, it's moving up a little bit. It broke out of that little range. So we still have some room. If it does break it, we'll just get out. Um, but we'll go over here to, we can check uh, oil out. We can take natural gas out. So natural gas, what do we got on natty gas there? Expiring at 230. We have a 3.820. Uh, natural gas is pretty volatile. It is on the one deviation. It did not close below it, so you know we probably still are moving down. But I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stand back from natural gas. So I don't think I'm gonna take that trade. Also, I see oil sort of trying to tick a little higher too. So with the that you know those two a lot of times moving somewhat in the same direction a good chunk of the time um, I'm gonna be a little bit more cautious and uh, stay away from that one so that gives us a few trades uh, we hopped in there we did an oil trade boom took profit we got a you know a corn directional trade on we got a soybean neutral trade on and uh, you know hopefully it'll uh, work out and if it doesn't we can get out that's that's the big thing is I you know I always try to tell people like you don't have to stay in okay so but uh, it's a pretty simple trade that you can do, and but you don't have to hold it. And uh, like I said, the oil one already won. So we got in that, we took our profit, we got out. And that's another thing. It's like trying to hold on for those last few bucks. When you're getting $25, you don't need to wait till expiration, okay? 
Um, you know, when it gets up there and you got 80% of your potential profit, take it. Be done, get out. And uh, But if you got, you know, if you're only going for 10 or 15 bucks, you really are looking at probably waiting until expiration on the trade. And that's, you know, just sort of how it, how it works. You know, if you do these corn and soybean ones, what I will tell you, the the bad part about them is they are very light in liquidity. But that's the same on corn and soybeans themselves. If you ever traded, especially corn, and uh, if you go in there and try to trade corn, you're going to notice real quick how fast. I mean, that thing can jump like four points, just like bam. Um, especially in the morning hours, more often than not. And uh, so, and you can use like you can use Ninja Trader. You could use um, you could hop over here. Let's say like you could use Think or Swim, and you know change up your charts however you want to. You can draw the levels on there. And you go, okay, well, which ones did I have? Well, I had the 1496.5 and the 1490. And so you go in, uh, zoom in on that. And let's see, we'll zoom back in, auto scale. Now that we've done that, we'll go over here. And now we're going to go ahead and draw in the uh, current levels on our chart and now uh, you can also add price alerts like thinker swim has a really cool price alert feature even on their mobile app they have a really cool price alert feature that you can take advantage of so you know, just make sure you are monitoring your position because that's where it can get dangerous you know if you're not ha you don't have any kind of monitoring going on when you're doing these you want to make sure that you're like hey i do have a plan i will get out if xyz whatever happens and uh then you got to have the commitment like don't get in if you're not willing to follow the plan and get out because uh you know one losing trade on these can be really painful and um, if you don't follow your risk management plan, okay? So as long as we follow it, as long as we're willing to take our losses and uh, limit our losses, let our profits run, then we'll be just fine on the trades. But if you're not willing to do that, if you're not willing to stick with it, this is not the trade for you. If you're somebody who has a hard time being disciplined and taking losses, do not do these trades, <laughs> okay? Because what you're doing is you're going for high probability trades that means usually you're getting a little less uh, than one to one sometimes you are getting one to one depending upon the exact trade that you're doing but since you're getting a little less than you know or even equal to one to one I mean you really want to make it where hey it's high probability if I can just get out take my loss move on grab the next trade that is so much better than I me mean, just being stuck in this trade for you know ever and I don't even want to be inside of it so um, you know, and you do have some time on a couple of these. I mean, but the corn and the soybeans, they're expiring at 2.15. So we do have a little time, so you are going to have to babysit them a little bit. And uh, get out of the trades. I, I showed you sort of how we did that already on the oil trade. So you can go back and watch the archive and see that. But you want to go in. You want to put your ticket in. You want to open it up. You want to flip it around. You know, if you bought, you want to sell. And then have your take profit pending. And then have a open out-of-ticket window for a stop loss. These things are way too volatile to do stop loss orders. That's why NEDX doesn't have them, because you would get hosed, okay, if they allowed you to do a stop loss order, because things can just move so fast. And, of course, even liquidity can mess you up. So you don't want to have, like, stop loss orders just sitting in the market out there. But you can have a, you know, a virtual trailing stop by simply opening up the ticket and being ready for it to potentially, you know, move in that direction. All right. So we have those up. We have them running. Let's go ahead and let's check some things out. We got uh, soybeans, um, you know, a little bit of movement, but overall, like, there's nothing to write home about. Didn't even move half a deviation today. We go in and we can check out corn while we're doing it. Um, we just did the analysis. I was just doing some simple premium collection trades on it. It did move down to 0 0.5, 0 0.7. It's, uh, you know, it's, you know, it sort of had its big move. So right there out of the gate. We can... Um, Go on down, let's check out gold. So after its stellar massive move yesterday, um, it uh, did have a, you know, a decent little move, but, uh, you know, nothing that's, um, it had a deviation move. You can put it that way. It only moved down 0.7, and it had moved up 0.5, a little bit more than 0.5. So you have about a one and a half deviation because you want to look from high to low as far as what a one deviation move is. And that is about 70% of expected movement. So that's sort of what we expect out of gold. Gold is probably done and cooked for the day. And, of course, now gold is closed, um, at least on the floor. Uh, we can go in and check out our copper. Uh, and on copper right here, uh, it moved on down to 0.5, sort of pushing on up, possibly to 0.5. 
We'll see. It's got a little bit further to go, but it, it's shut down as far as the floor is concerned already. And let's go ahead and look at silver. So silver, and it's amazing how, I mean, these levels, they just bounce. Like, look at that. It's poof, right off of them. And uh, sort of feels like you're cheating sometimes. And uh, go on over here to uh, silver, and we'll see it move down 0.5 right to 0.7 before turning right back around. And uh, if we measure that, okay, I'll go ahead and I'll show you what I'm talking about when I say measure like the one deviation move. If we measure, you know, sort of eyeball quick measurement from, you know, settlement to one, it's 0.74. Well, if I measure it from where it went down to, it went down to 0.7 deviations. Then I'm back up, we got 0.765. So silver from low to high already moved a deviation right before the close. We had a quick little sell off and uh, shut down for the day. That wraps up our metals and our ags. Now let's go ahead and check out our energies. So on oil, we had to move down. We moved on down to, uh, from almost up to 0.5, then point, negative 0.5, then negative 0.7, then one, negative one. And so, I mean, you're talking definitely over one and a half deviation move on oil. And uh, like I said, after we hit that stop, it popped up a little bit, and then it went into chop. And again, that's what we expect. We expect once that 10-minute deviation stop is hit, to basically go into chop or reverse um, on the one deviation stop. And then we go over here to say natty gas right there. We got natural gas. And it moved down. I mean, basically perfect one deviation move. Look at that settlement, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, minus 1. If I was going to do anything on natural gas, I'd want to look for a buy side premium collection trade, and there aren't any available. So not for the at least the risk reward that I like to have at a minimum. And uh, so, you know, I don't want to have more than $90 risk, and uh, ideally it's close to $70 risk if possible. And uh, right now there's just not one there. So I can leave it up, I can let it float, and if it moves around a little bit, I might be able to still, you know, capture it and take advantage of it. And uh, so that wraps up our energy sector. Let's go in now and let's take a look at our indices, okay? So on the indices, let's see what we got going on over here. Pull these uh, pieces together for us. And it looks like on the indices right here, on the S&P 500 futures, we moved uh, basically up 0.5, down 0.5, and then back again. And uh, it's really interesting how often the market will hit about six points away from settlement and come right back. And, uh, I mean, uh, yesterday, obviously, not counting. Um, with the Fed fund movement, the post sell-off, and the day before that being Fed fund. But, I mean, the, on the average day, a lot of times it will oscillate like that. And I can show you right here on the deviation levels. Um, we got to add in a corn ticket update. Let's see here. We'll get that out of the way. And out of the way. On our deviation levels right here, you know, look at the S&P. And, I mean, it is the implied volatility is with the roof, obviously, because of yesterday. And uh, so that's why it pushed it so far out. But uh, basically said it expects basically a movement of at least, you know, 20 points total. And we did get that 10 up and that 10 down. And uh, so half deviation up, half deviation down. And we hit that perfect one deviation move on the day. And uh, now, I don't know, maybe butterfly the thing, right? So uh, we might even look at that, see if there's a possibility there. Potentially butterfly the trade. All right, we'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position at Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, let's look at a few things right here. We got a couple different markets moving a little bit. Um, that corn trade, you should be really looking to potentially get out of that trade any second, okay? So um, if you're not already out, so but because uh, it already went up and hit that 667, right? So what's the rule? If we hit it, we got to get out of it. All right, so you take the hit, whatever. You go in, take twenty, twenty-five dollar hit, move on, go to the next trade. Or, I mean, if you want to stay in it, you can, but you got to have some point where you're going to take the loss. So I've I've talked to some traders I know what they'll do is they'll actually they won't take the hit until it hits seventy-five because they might still be profitable on the trade, and so they want to give all that profit just like right back right away. And um, so you know what? I mean, I get that that could work for you, it could work well, it could work horrible. <laughs> Um, you know, so it's just uh, you got to figure out what's going to work best for you and the way that you like to trade um, on these contracts. But um, you know, I like I like to just take the hit and move on personally. So it just it's really you know what is your trading style? So you may ask why would somebody even think that that's a good idea? Why would somebody want to go in potentially and wait till it hits seventy five? Well, the the logic, the reasoning behind it would be. Um, if it gets close, okay, and uh, then falls back down, because a lot of times it'll get really close, and then it'll come on back, that 
they're able to, you know, not get kicked out of the trade by such a small move. Okay? Now, another logic, though, that's almost equally, or you could say is equally as valid, would be if it goes up and hits it and you take your hit and it comes back down, you could always hop back in again. Okay? So you could hop back in on the corn trade and resell it for 25. When it, like, if it goes up to 50, you get out. It comes back down and you resell for 25. Why would you do that? Okay? Well, by doing that, if you are profitable the second time, then you'll have covered your loss, your $25 loss. If it goes back up and hits it again, and you get out again, you lost 50 bucks, just like the guy that said he'd get out when it hit 75. Okay? So you could do either one. Um, the advantage to the guy doing the 75 is he actually may end up with a net profit if it comes back down that you wouldn't. But the disadvantage to the person waiting for it to go to 75 is it may... He may think he's getting out of 75, but depending on how fast time goes by, okay, he may not be able to. It may go from, like, 60 to 80 to 90 in a matter of seconds. And because uh, out of the money binaries, the less time there is, the faster they are going to move um, and the less time you're going to have to be able to react to the trades. So, uh, anyways, but just, uh, you know, a couple things for you to look at. And... Let's see here. I'm looking at a couple other things. I'm trying to see what else is out there. But uh, anyways, well, we got the S&P. It's been sort of ticking down, ticking down. And what can we do with that? We could look over here and go, well, let's look at US 500. Pull that up. And uh, the big thing I try to, I'm trying to do on the show is, you know, to sort of challenge you to think outside the box. I mean, they're called options for a reason, right? You got options. And uh, some people love that fact. Some people, they hate it because they don't want to have options. They don't be like, hey, I just want to buy and I want to sell. <laughs> uh, so the thing is, when you have options, you can stack things in your favor. Okay? There's a lot of things you can do that you can normally do if you didn't have those options. But, uh, you know, there's, I mean, there's just a lot of possibilities. And if you can uh, learn how to take advantage of them, then uh, it's a pretty sweet deal. So, uh, anyway, so they're going to start pulling the bids right now for the 2 o'clock expirations, but it looks like our 2 o'clock expiration trades are good. Oil trade went well. Corn trade, we uh, hopped in that trade, and then we turned around, hopped out of that trade, and then we turned around and hopped back in that trade. So, up to you. And then uh, right now i got the uh, butterfly on soybeans. Y'all have a great day. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Hi, folks. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and the trend is your friend until it changes. A free special report is now available on the homepage of TFNN.com, and if you have money in the markets, this free report is a must. If your strategy is buy and hold, this report is a must. If you're a day trader, a swing trader, a forex or options trader, or just getting into the markets, this report is a must, and it's the second best gift you'll ever receive. Look, if you buy a stock and the general market is trending in the other direction, you've reduced your odds of buying at the right time by 70%. Instead, let me teach you how to get that 70% advantage plus. The plus is a free trial to my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. There's no upfront deposit, no charge to your credit card, and I can press decades of education into each daily newsletter. This is a limited time offer, so act now, and I'll teach you how to take the trend and turn it into your best friend. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. Act now.